Greetings to all. Today I am going to deliver a talk on Keynes theory of trade cycle and Schumpeter's innovation theory of trade cycle. Let me start with the meaning of trade cycle. A trade cycle refers to fluctuations in economic activities, especially in employment, output, income, prices, profits, etc. According to Keynes, a trade cycle is composed of periods of good trade characterized by rising prices and low unemployment percentages altering with periods of bad trade characterized by falling prices and high unemployment percentages. Now I would like to highlight the Keynes theory of trade cycle. Keynes does not develop a complete and pure theory of trade cycles. According to Keynes, effective demand is composed of consumption and investment expenditure. It is effective demand which, which determines the level of income and employment. Therefore, changes in total expenditure, that is consumption and investment expenditure, affects effective demand and this will bring about fluctuations in economic activity. Keynes believes that consumption expenditure is stable and it is fluctuation in investment expenditure which is responsible for changes in output, income and employment. Investment depends on rate of interest and marginal efficiency of capital. Since the rate of interest is more or less stable, marginal efficiency of capital determines investment. Marginal efficiency of capital depends on two factors, prospective yield and supply prices of capital asset. An increase in marginal efficiency of capital will create more employment, output and income leading to prosperity. On the other hand, a decline in marginal efficiency of capital leads to unemployment and fall in income and output. It results in depression. During the period of expansion, businessmen are optimistic. Marginal efficiency of capital is rapidly increasing and rate of interest is striking. So entrepreneurs undertake more investment, new investment also. The process of expansion goes on till the boom is reached. As the process of expansion continues, cost of production increases due to scarcity of factors of production. This will lead to fall in marginal efficiency of capital. Further, price of product falls due to abundant supply leading to a decline in profits. This leads to depression. As time passes, existing machinery becomes worn out and has to be replaced. Surplus stocks of goods are exhausted. As there is a fall in price of raw materials and equipments, cars fall. Wages also go down. Marginal efficiency of capital increases, leading to recovery. Keynes states that trade cycle can be described and analyzed in terms of fluctuations of the marginal efficiency of capital relatively to the rate of interest. Now I will focus on the merits of trade cycle. The merit of Keynes theory lies in explaining turning points, the lower and upper turning points of a trade cycle. The earlier economists considered the changes in the amount of credit given by banking system to be responsible for cyclical fluctuations. But for Keynes, the changes in consumption expenditure with its effect on marginal efficiency of capital is responsible for trade cycle. Keynes thus has given a satisfactory explanation of trade cycle. Finally, I would like to address the criticisms of trade cycle. Firstly, according to Keynes, the main cause of trade cycle is the fluctuations in marginal efficiency of capital. But the term marginal efficiency of capital is vague. Marginal efficiency of capital depends on the expectations of the entrepreneur about future. In this sense, it is similar to that of Figo's psychological theory. He has ignored real factors. Secondly, Keynes assumes that 
rate of interest is stable, but rate of interest does not play an important role in deciding in decision making process of entrepreneurs. Thirdly, Keynes does not explain periodicity of trade cycle. In the period of recession and depression, according to Keynes, the rate of interest should not be high. The rate of interest should be high due to strong liquidity preference. But during this period, rate of interest is very low. Similarly, during boom, rate of interest should be low because of weak liquidity preference. But actually, the rate of interest is high. Now, we should turn to the Schumpeter's innovation theory of trade cycle. Joseph A. Schumpeter has developed innovation theory of trade cycles. An innovation includes the discovery of a new product, opening of a new market, reorganization of an industry, and development of a new method of production. These innovations may reduce the cost of production and may shift the demand curve. Thus, innovations may bring about changes in economic conditions. Suppose at full employment level, the innovation in the form of new product has been introduced. Innovation is financed by bank loans. As there is full employment already, factors of production have to be withdrawn from others to manufacture the new product. Hence, due to competition for factors of production costs may go up, leading to an increase in price. When the new product becomes successful, other entrepreneurs will also produce similar products. This will result in cumulative expansion and prosperity. When the innovation is adopted by many, super normal profits will be competed away. Firms incurring losses will go out of business. Employment, output and income fall resulting in depression. Let me elaborate further on the criticisms of Schumpeter's innovation theory of trade cycle. Firstly, Schumpeter's theory is based on two assumptions wise full employment and that of innovation is being financed by banks. But full employment is an unrealistic assumption as no country in the world has achieved full employment. Further, innovation is usually financed by the promoters and not by banks. And secondly, innovation is not the only cause of business cycle. I hope you understand the topic related to Keynes' theory of trade cycle and Schumpeter's innovation theory of trade cycle. Thank you.